All right, brush monkeys, I am super excited today because I am a little late to the table, but I am finally getting around to getting my hands on one of these, the Army Painter Metallic Colors paint set. Now this, um, <clears throat> when I went to go get this, I come to find out there's actually two metallic paint sets. There's a metallic color set, and then there's a metallic set. But the metallic set has your usual silver and gold and copper and all those metallics. This one has the metallic colors like red and green and blue and purple and uh, and it's got this thing called fairy dust which I guess according to the stuff on the back you can make any um, you can combine that with any other paint to make it metallic so I guess it's like a metallic medium but I'm really excited about this because this is kind of reminds me of the old um, Citadel metallics paint set with a few notable exceptions um, one the Citadel metallics didn't have red it didn't have black which I'm guessing is what this night scales is and it didn't have um, it didn't have pink did it have purple yeah it had purple and it had like copper and silver and some other things like that but um, but yeah those three colors are kind of unique to this so I'm kind of looking forward to getting into this um, I haven't opened this yet so I'm gonna go ahead and do so now really really excited about this I remember when the the Citadel metallic set came out back in the early 90s and it was a game changer like it, it completely changed how I was painting miniatures suddenly all my chaos band had uh, metallic armor I had some uh, dark elf cold wind riders that got purple metallic armor <laughs> and, uh, and they look fantastic so I'm looking forward to seeing how these turn out um, and of course, you know, I'm I'm an unabashed fanboy for anything from the Army Painter, so you know, there's that too. Okay, so right off the bat, they pack a lot of stuff into this little box here. I'll go ahead and put that off to the side here. We've got your War Gamers painting guide, which is your usual Army Painter painting guide. You can pick these up for free in the store too, but they stick these in uh, all our packaging. Um, you got a little pamphlet of the Army Painter Hobby products that lists everything they do, including the full range of 124 war paints. And, uh, okay, so it says how to use it. Battlefield is basic science. All kinds of stuff in here. So, yeah, I got a really nice little pamphlet here on all the different colored war paints and brushes and everything the Army Painter has to offer. This actually comes with a little baggie of the, the um, agitators. These agitators are fantastic. I love those things. I buy them, put them in everything I have. A uh, little thank you card. Smash, missing, and broken. Oh, okay, so if you, if you need something replaced, you can contact them. And then there are the paints. So, let's see. I've got these listed out in a particular order, so that's how I'm going to do them. Uh, Evil Chrome. Glitter Green, so pretty. Um, night Scales, so I'm guessing is a. I'm really looking forward to trying this one out. If this one works, I've got a, uh, I've got a Black Dragon. I'm gonna use this on because uh, Black Dragons are kind of tricky because I can't do my usual uh, Dragon Scale wax with them, and that kind of looks like I'll be able to do that. Uh, gemstones, nice metallic red. Be interesting to compare that with the um, scale 75 metallic reds that I've got. Um, tainted gold, it's this one here. It's kind of an old greenish gold. Uh, Azure magic. Is that one? No, it's the blue one. Azure. Learn your colors, Tom. Adam Magic, Elven Armor, it's a blue one. Uh, Zephyr Pink, Royal Purple, and the Fairy Dust. I am kind of curious as to how that one works exactly. And then you get this little tray that, that they come in, and it's got room for a brush too, so it comes with a brush. Alright, so I'm going to put that off to the side. 
And as usual, I've got my um, color studies book all made up here. So I'm going to go ahead and get into some of these guys. Start putting the agitators in them. Shake them up and see how they work. Right. Get right on it here. Right off the bat, the little Ziploc bag is a little bit annoying for my big fat fingers. There we go. Now, Army Painter recommends putting two of these per per bottle, and uh, with thicker pigment, metallic pigments, I can kind of see why. So, but I did the math on these and I can tell I'm going to run out of these <laughs> before I run out of the other ones. But that's okay because I got another whole jar of agitators. I'll put that off to the side there. And they say you shouldn't use um, a wet palette with metallic paints. I've never had a problem with it. So I'm, go I'm going to go ahead and use this anyway. Off the bat, you can really hear those agitators going to town in there. So I'm pretty happy with that. Alright. Um, so Evil Chrome looks to be kind of a um, bronze color. It's kind of pretty. It's really smooth. It doesn't feel chunkier at all. Let's see how it looks on here. Yeah, that goes on really nice and smooth. Good coverage, too. Wow. This is what I love about the Army Painter's paints. As they go on, you can put them on fairly thin, but they really good coverage. Look at that. That is pretty. That is really nice. All right. So, bear with me. We are going through all of these. Because this is going to be... I've been looking forward to this. Right, up next is glitter green. Oh, that is a nice emerald green. Look at that. That is shit. That's pretty. All right. It's a really nice light metallic green. I've got a darker metallic green. That's not. That I think is one of the. I think it's the old Citadel one was a little darker. But this is. Damn, that's pretty. Get a little more here. Now, for those of you who haven't seen my other videos, this color studies book is something I recommend doing. And all it is is just a. Um, multimedia book, uh, mixed media book, from um, from someplace like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. And the paper's formulated for doing uh, sketches and, um, uh, God, I'm drawing a blank here, sketches and watercolors and things like that on there. And it it helps to have a book like this that, that lists all your colors and has little swatches of all your colors so you can see what they look like when they're dry. Some of them look different when they dry than when they're uh, when they're still wet. So it's important to to, uh, to have something like this. What on earth was that? Can't tell if I got siren going on in my yard or we've got banshees outside. That was terrifying. <laughs> All right. This night scale is one I was really looking forward to because I don't have a metallic black in my collection, and so this ought to be really, really nice if it if it's if it turns out the way I hope it will. My problem is mixing metallic medium with any color tends to lighten that color 
So you mix metallic medium with black, for example, you just get a kind of a metallic dark gray. This actually looks like it's black. So get a good amount of that on the brush. God, just okay. Catching it in the light, it looks like it's. Oh man. It is metallic black, but it almost looks like metallic nightmare black, like there's a bluish tint to it as well. Look at that. Aren't you pretty? Yeah. Kind of a bluish purple black. I like that. Oh, that's going to look good on that dragon. I'm going to thin that down and spray it over the back of the dragon when I, uh, when I go to paint him. Alright, um, some stones up next. Ooh, that one's pretty. That's a nice ruby red. I said I was going to compare that to the um, Scale 75 red. It looks a little bit like the um, Garnet Alchemy. And uh, looks actually it's a little bit darker than the Garnet Alchemy, which is nice because I needed that metallic red for another project and Army Painter hadn't come out with them yet. <laughs> So you Garnet Alchemy, I also got the Ruby Alchemy, and this looks a little darker than Ruby Alchemy. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, I'm just going to be gushing over these, over all these. So far, they all look amazing. Cool. Oh, yeah. That. These go on really smooth and yet they've got really really good coverage and nice metallic sheen to them. Look at that. Those are gorgeous. These are gorgeous paints. Holy shit. Alright, tainted gold. Probably should have spaced these a little bit further out. But now I've got I've got an old gold from uh Oh man, that's nice. Look at that. It's kind of a greenish gold. I've got an old gold from uh, Vallejo that's just kind of an old gold. And then there's a another gold from Citadel. It's not, it's not one of the old ones. Well, maybe it might be one of the old ones. I've got one that doesn't have a label. It may be one that I mixed myself. But it's that same kind of greenish gold. I love the fact that all these, once I put them in the vortex mixer, you can hear the agitators rattling around in there really well. Like, you can tell right off the bat that the agitators are doing their job and the vortex mixer is doing its job. And that the paint wasn't, um, wasn't too settled in the bottle in the first place. Um, I've heard rumors, uh, complaints online, of some of these paints not being great right out the bottle. Um, they either settled or sometimes the shipment got frozen or something something weird happened to them and so they're useless right off the bat but then again army painter has great customer service and will replace it if you let them know look i bought this box set of your paints and two of them are frozen stiff all right so tainted gold looks pretty good okay now, after trying these, I might have to go back and get the regular metallic set. I mean, I got a ton of metallic paints already, but these are really nice. Oh, look at that Azure Magic. That'd be a nice one for painting uh, Thousand Suns Chaos Marines. Damn, that is pretty. Oh, shit, that one, that one kind of spewed out when I put the lid back on. I don't know what happened there. Hang on. Maybe I didn't like to mention the chaos. All right, don't paint your thousand suns with this. <laughs> not, trying to, not trying to offend the paint gods here. Chill.
realize I forgot to shake that one before I put it on there. Great as a magic. Look at that. Without really even shaking it, it still goes on really nice. I got plans rolling around in my head for some of these. I got figures that I was just going to do regular old armor, and I don't think I'm going to do something like really fantastic with them. Elven armor almost looks more uh, like purplish blue. A little more on the violet end of things. But that Azure magic really shows up on my thumbs. <laughs> camera it looks a little more blue and person it looks a little more purple <laughs> the paper is kind of a bluish purple again it looks more blue on camera I forgot how to adjust the color settings on this camera because a lot of stuff seems to come out a lot thinner or a lot brighter on camera than it does on in real life all right, Zephyr Pink. Get that bad boy out of there. Ooh, damn, that's pretty. That is, that is vibrant. Now I've got a figure coming up that um, I plan on painting for a breast cancer awareness raffle, and uh, I think I might have to do that Zephyr Pink on there because I got a couple other pink paints that I'm going to use for it. That is where I had the Zephyr Pink and Rose Gold. That's a nice one. These are all gorgeous. I'm just this is just ridiculous. There's not a bad looking paint in the bunch so far. Get out a few more agitators here. Start keeping all my agitators in this little pill bottle. Just Keeps them from rolling around anywhere. It's a little easier to get them out of than the blister pack that come in. And it takes up a corner of one of my drawers. And well purple. Ooh, damn. These are such bright, vibrant colors. Well done, Army Painter. They're gorgeous. Now, again, I bought a scale 75 uh, amethyst alchemy because I was looking for kind of a dark purple. Look at that. This is really more of a bluish purple. This is almost more like the uh, uh, elven armor. Oh, that's a little more blue. This is quite a bit darker. But again, for what I needed it for, kind of wishing I'd gotten held off and done the army painter paints. Oops. By the way, if y'all don't have a vortex mixer, why not? Go get one. These things are amazing. And they're so easy on everything. <laughs> Lost 
my hands after this. I'm getting paint everywhere. All right. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Okay, royal purple. Zephyr pink as it dries. It kind of looks like a lighter version of gemstone, but it's really so much better. Oh my god, look at the coverage on that. Look at you, you beautiful beast. <laughs> look at that. That's nice. I like that. All right, and last but not least, the fairy dust effect paint. This is the one, this is, I'm guessing it's a metallic medium. And yeah, it's pretty much just like metallic white. Is really what it is. And um, I had gotten some, uh, oh, um, I'd gotten Vallejo's, met Vallejo's metal medium. And it's kind of the same sort of just metallic white thing. Um, this stuff I had gotten because I wanted to add it to something else to see if uh, see if that would make it metallic or see if I could thicken it up a little bit. And um, it didn't quite work out the way I thought because you know it's just metallic medium. But that one is actually more of a metallic white. If this is a true metallic medium that you can add to other paints to make them metallic, that will be interesting to experiment with and see what I can do with that. Um, Okay. I, hang on. I keep leaning on this. <laughs> Trying to steady my hand, so I'm leaning it on the palette, and then of course stick my hand in the wet paint that's still on the palette. <laughs> it's like, come on. Throw my paint at the others now. I'm frustrated, so I'm throwing my paint around. All right, fairy dust effect paint. Yep, that is a very nice metallic white. Now I'm going to have to play with that a little bit to see if, to see how mixing that with other paints makes them metallic, because if it's if it's a true metallic medium, then it will just make the paints metallic. If if fairy dust is actually closer to a metallic white, like it looks, then it's not only going to make the metallic, it's going to lighten them up, which is not what I want. Um, sometimes you want a nice dark metallic color, and you're not going to get that if you <laughs> if you uh, mix white with it. All right, so right off the bat, um, all those colors look so vibrant and so beautiful, and they got a nice shimmer to them. Those are nice. God damn, those are nice. All right, so um, I'm going to pause here, and we're going to play with that metallic medium a little bit, the fairy dust, and see what I can do with that. And then... Um, once I've got some samples of some stuff worked out with that, then we'll come back and take a look at it. All right, see you soon. Bye. All right, Brush Monkeys, I'm back. And I'm gonna experiment with this um, Army Painter Fairy Dust here by mixing it with some other paints that uh, aren't on the Army Painter Metallics list, but might work as highlights for these metallics. Because if you're doing a true metallic metal kind of thing, you want to have lighter shades of the same colors but not necessarily just mix white in with it because that'll dull it down or highlight with a lighter shade of like say you're painting with royal purple you don't want to just highlight it with a lighter shade of purple because it's not metallic that kind of thing so um, I've got some paints here that I'm going to combine it with I've got uh, starting with uh, scale 75 fantasy games surfer orc flesh which is kind of a uh, Seafoam green, and I've got Citadel's Gauss Blaster green, which is going to be an even lighter Seafoam green. And then I have um, Reaper Master Series Surf Aqua. It's kind of a pale blue, okay. And Citadel's Blue Horror. And then I've got 
two um, two Reaper Master Series paints and Doran blue which is kind of a lighter blue than you get in the than with the Elven armor and this one is Reaper Master Series um, breast cancer awareness pink which is a sample that I got in the with a Reaper order I thought it'd be interesting to do a, a pink highlight for Zephyr pink and see how that works so I'm gonna and I've got all these index cards out to um, catalog them if this works out now if you see on my wet palette here I've already got the um, fairy dust added to the wet palette so now I'm just gonna mix these one at a time and see how they work out okay so we're gonna start with the fantasy games uh, excuse me scale 75 fantasy games uh, orc flesh now the scale 75 fantasy get their fantasy line is thinner than their regular scale 75 scale color line their um, fancy games are much more like uh, regular acrylic paints they're not um, they're not gel based like the uh, like the others so let's just mix that together see how that looks it's actually kind of pretty all right so right off the bat I gotta say it doesn't look like the um, fairy dust thins it I mean doesn't thin it um, it doesn't lighten it it's not like mixing it with white so that's a good sign and that's a pretty nice vibrant color I don't know how metallic that is but that's a nice vibrant color Kind of having some sinus problems today. All right, so let's start, go with uh, Gauss Blaster Green next. Do that. I'm going to let each one of these dry, and then I'm going to compare them to how they look to the original in the uh, color studies book. So hopefully there'll be a noticeable difference. The edge paints are really light. Again, doesn't seem to have lightened it up hardly any. So this is good. I'm really liking the fact that it's not it's not lightening the paints at all. It is thinning them somewhat. So it's really more of a metallic medium, but it's not adding it's adding medium, but it's not adding white to them. Alright, Blue Horror. Oh, hold on. Let's hold off on that for a second. Um, what is this one? Surf Aqua. Surf Aqua first. Now the Surf Aqua and the Surfer Orc Flesh are two colors that I got for another project down the line. So this is actually the first time I messed with them, sort of putting them in the color studies book. And I kind of like how these look. I don't think I'm going to use the metallic version of them for my future project, but the color itself looks pretty nice. When I get done with this, I'll show you something else I did with the... Um, color studies book that I think is kind of cool okay sorry I gotta pause here all right I'm back the blue horror was giving me a little bit of problems um, but once I got it going it's looking pretty good some of these lighter ones these edge paints are almost too light to see on camera <laughs> Let's 
stab myself with my pokey tool. Not cool. Alright, this is Eper Master Series Pathfinder paints indoor and blue. And last but not least, the breast cancer awareness pink. The Endoran blue was kind of thin to begin with, so it kind of... I don't know, like I said, it's thinning it out, so you're not getting quite the coverage that you're getting with the full-on metallic paints, but... At the same time... It's not... Like I said, it's not lightening the paints themselves so not sure what the deal is with that one Alright, there's those two. Alright, so while those dry, what I did with the um, color studies book last night is I took those index cards and put them kind of over the middle of the uh, samples that I painted on in the first part of the video. And now, if you can see, half of it is kind of shimmery and half of it is matte because I took some of the Army Painter matte paint and sprayed it like I said I covered up half of it and then I sprayed it over the other half so you can see what it looks like when you paint the when you put the matte seal on over it and it's still metallic and it's still got some sheen to it even with the matte seal on there it still looks really good I'm pretty impressed with these um, I mean even like like the gemstone and the night scales you can tell are still a metallic color even after they've been matte sealed so it looks really fantastic, and I'm really impressed with that. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how these look once they're um, once they're all dry. Okay, just looking at the two that we looked at before, the um, Scale 75 uh, Surfer Orc Flesh is definitely a metallic version of that, and it's still Surfer Orc Flesh, but it's got a little metallic sheen to it. Um, I can see a little bit of a metallic sheen to the uh, Gus Blaster Green, but not as much. Um, same with the um, same with the Surf Aqua and the uh, Blue Horror. You can see a little bit more metallic sheen to the Surf Aqua. The Blue Horror, not so much. Um, there's a little bit of metallics to it, but it's not terribly standing out. These two are still, still kind of wet, but there's, again, there's a little more metallic to the blue than there is to the pink. Now, I don't know if that's something to do with the paints themselves or how much um, how much of the fairy dust I got into the mix like maybe I just got more in or maybe the the three that worked out better were the darker colors and once you get to a, a certain lighter shade it just doesn't work as well um, don't know but let's see how they look in comparison to the original colors so let me see if I can find the okay so here's the scale 75 surfer orc flesh right there okay 
and then compare that to the sample with the metallics it didn't lighten it up a whole lot it there is some but it may just be that it's a thinner because it's a medium it's a thinner mix of the surfer orc flesh so it's come out a little bit just a shade lighter but not terribly lighter and that looks pretty good okay Let's see if we can find the um, goss blaster green here Bear with me. Once you get into some of the later, some of the newer paints, my, uh, it's not as simple as, oh, here's all your greens, here's all your. There we go. It's blaster green. Goss blaster green. All right. There's the original Goss blaster green. There's a sample with the metallics in it. Again. Not terribly different, not a whole lot lighter, and it looks pretty good. So I'm really pleased to see that it's not lightening it up too much. So while we're here, here's the original Blue Horror, and then here's the Blue Horror with the metallic. Yeah, that'll work. And. Surf Aqua, original Surf Aqua, and Surf Aqua with the metallic. Again, a little bit lighter, but may just be because it's thinned down a little bit more. So that's nice. I really like that one. And last but not least, to Pathfinder. Alright, so there's your breast cancer awareness pink. There's the Andor in blue, and there's Andor in blue metallic. So yeah, the uh, fairy dust didn't change the color, and kept it fairly true to the uh, fairly true to the original. Just made them slightly metallic, not terribly metallic. As these are drying off, I can see a little bit more metallics, but again, it's in the darker shades. I'm seeing it in the the Surf Aqua. Or the Surf Aqua, the Surfer Orc Flesh, and the um, Andorran Blue more than the Goss Blaster Green, Blue Horror, or Breast Cancer Awareness Pink. But there you go. So, um, so yeah, this this Fairy Dust is kind of an interesting little, uh, interesting little additive there. I think it'd be interesting to see if you want a metallic version of a color you already have and don't quite know how to how to get it there without without changing the properties of that paint. Um, this would be a good way to go. Um, so yeah, I, kind of, I like it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and uh, call it a day. This the Citadel, or excuse me, the Army Painter Metallics paint set is a really good buy. Uh, mine was uh, twenty-seven ninety-nine, uh, not including tax, at my local game store. So go pick one up; it's well worth the price. You know, if you paint a lot of metallics, it's definitely worth it. Um, so thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next week. Bye. Hey Brush Monkeys, Tom from Flying Monkey Studios here. If you like what you see, click like down below. Um, if you want to be notified when new videos come out, click subscribe. And uh, in the meantime, if you want to see how to add one of the miniatures that we've painted on this channel to your own collection, check out our Instagram, uh, Tumblr, and uh, Patreon sites. Uh, if you want to support, support us in doing what we do, Check out my Patreon site. Check out my uh, merch store at storefrontier.com slash flymonkeystudios. You can get t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, long sleeve shirts, hoodies, all kinds of stuff there. Um, go check that out. 
And uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye.